it's recently been shown there's actually no plasticity within each neocortical module, which is on the order of 100 neurons. There's a great deal of plasticity between the modules. And we have 300 million different modules. And they self-organize into hierarchies. And at the bottom of the hierarchy, we do very simple things, like being able to extract frequencies from sound or straight lines and curved lines in images. And at the top of the hierarchy, we can tell that something's beautiful or recognize a face or recognize a dog, uh, create mu music, uh, play advanced games. We're learning these processes in our computers and they can learn in a similar manner. I have a particular model of how the neocortex works, which is actually different than the deep neural nets that are now being experimented with, but they're both self-organizing systems and they learn from information. Uh, and we're, we're already utilizing artificial intelligence to enhance our own intelligence. We do it basically through these devices that we carry around. Some people have them already connected into their brains, like Parkinson's patients, but for the most part, they're outside our bodies, but they might as well be part of our bodies because we rely on them constantly and, and we're more and more dependent on them. Uh, they will be connected directly to our brain wirelessly. We'll have these medical nanorobots go into our brain non-invasively with the capillaries and basically connect wirelessly our neocortical modules. We already have computer simulations of learning deep neural nets, which can actually learn and uh, do a better job at, than human brains at, at what used to be considered high-level cognitive functions, like playing a game like Go or recognizing visual images. Just a few years ago, people were saying, ah, hey, I can't even tell the difference between a dog and a cat. Now it can tell thousands of different categories apart and do it actually better than humans. And uh, so these, AI programs are increasingly doing things that uh, people uh, never thought computers could do, and I can actually do them better than humans in many cases, driving cars, for example. I have a somewhat different model of how the neocortex works in these deep neural nets, and I think it is based on the evidence of how the neocortex actually works. And uh, we're creating artificial intelligence based on this model. It'll be refined over the years. By the 2030s, we will have, I think, s synthetic neocortex. It works just like the neocortex works, and we'll be able to connect our neocortex wirelessly to the neocortex. So this, as I'm speaking, is, is communicating wirelessly with the cloud and it makes itself a million times smarter. It can access all of human knowledge uh, wirelessly, and it does this constantly and seamlessly. We'll do that directly from our brains. We do it now indirectly through these devices. I can access all of human knowledge, but I have to kind of look at a small screen and type on it. Uh, we'll do it directly from our brains, and not just do search directly from our neocortex, but actually access additional neocortex and make ourselves smarter, just the way primates made themselves smarter when they became humanoids two million years ago, we'll add additional neocortex. That additional neocortex we got two million years ago was the enabling factor for us to invent language and music and art, humor. No other animal does these things. And as we add more neocortex, we'll add more profound ways of communicating by analogy, it will be to us today the way humans and our music and language are to primates. So you know, try explaining to a primate what music is. Uh, similarly, we can't really imagine what these future capabilities of our enhanced humans will be, but we'll create more profound music, we'll be funnier, uh, we'll command more knowledge directly from our brains.